The meaning of this hadith narrated by Imam Muslim through a Sahih chain, the meaning is that Umar radiallahu anhu is saying, we were sitting in the session of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, suddenly a man came in, dressed in very white clothes, he had very black hair, no one among us knew him and there was no sign of trouble on him. His clothes were very clean, although they were white. For a person who is walking in the desert, for instance, that you can see he is a traveler, you would see dust on his clothes. But this person, his clothes were very, very clean. So there is no sign of trouble on his clothes. And none of the companions know this person. He sat directing himself to the Prophet ﷺ. Then he put his knees just next to the knees of the Prophet ﷺ. Then he put his palms upon the thighs of the Prophet ﷺ. Then he said, O Muhammad, tell me about Al-Islam. That is, what are the most important things about Islam? The Prophet answered by saying, Al-Islam is to bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. To perform a salah, prayer, to pay a zakah, type of financial obligation, to fast Ramadan and to make pilgrimage to, to Al-Kaaba if one is able to do so. The person replied by saying, that is correct. Sayyiduna Umar said, we were surprised. First he asked him, then he said, this is correct, as if he knew the answer. Then he asked the Prophet again, now tell me about the belief, the belief of the Muslims. That is, what are the most important matters of the belief? The Prophet ﷺ replied, Al-Iman, the belief, is to believe in Allah, His angels, His revealed books, his prophets and messengers, the day of judgment, and to believe in Al-Qadr, whether good or evil. Umar said again, we were surprised. He asked the Prophet and he said that is correct, as if he knew the answer. Then the person said, tell me about Al-Ihsan. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, to worship Allah as if you see him. If you don't, which is the case, then know that he can see you. The person said, tell me about the day of judgment. When it's going to happen? The Prophet answered, I do not know more than you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't know about the time when the day of judgment will occur. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, I do not know more about it than you do. There is neither you nor I know when this will take place exactly. The man said, then tell me about its signs. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, among its signs are for the woman to give birth to her female master, to see the people without shoes and without enough clothes and who are needy whose principal income comes from grazing sheep, building high buildings. Then the person left. Umar said, I waited a long time. In some narrations, it was mentioned that it was after three days. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Umar, do you know who this man was? Umar said, Allah and his messenger know best. That is, I do not know. The Prophet ﷺ said, this was Jibreel, Angel Gabriel. He came to teach you your religion. That is, he came to ask me before you so that I answer and by this you acquire from me these rules of the religion. So, it's indirect way of teaching. In some narrations it was mentioned that when this man left this session, of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet asked the companions to follow him. They followed him and could not find him. He's an angel. After three days, the Prophet asked, do you know who he was? 
They said Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet said he was Jibreel, angel Gabriel. He came to teach you your religion. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the most important matters of Islam and Iman and the definition of Al-Ihsan. And when he was asked about the time when the day of judgment will occur, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Jibreel that he doesn't know more about it than Jibreel himself because neither Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam nor Jibreel know about the time when the day of judgment occurs. So he asked him about its signs. He mentioned two signs of the day of judgment. The first one, an talid al-amatu rabbataha. When the female slave gives birth to her female master. In some narrations, it was explained and the scholars of Islam gave the meaning of this hadith. They mentioned that it means a lot of women do not treat their mothers in the proper way. The daughter treats the mother in a bad way as if she owns her mother as a slave. That's one of the like interpretations of this hadith. The second sign mentioned in this hadith by the Prophet is to see the situation of the needy poor shepherds change to a point that they become very rich and build high buildings. Both of these signs occurred in some areas, especially in the eastern part of Najd. Najd is al Riyadh and the suburbs. Some Bedouins who were very poor suddenly became very rich. And they started building high buildings and compete who's going to build a higher building. Among the important matters, basic matters of the belief which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in this hadith known as Hadith Jibreel. This hadith is called Hadith Jibreel. Was the issue of believing in Al-Qadr whether good or evil. This means that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala preordained eternally the existence of all the creation. It's good and evil. All of them exist by the eternal qadr of Allah. So it would not be permissible to refer to the qadr by the meaning of the attribute of the self of Allah azza wa jal as evil. The attributes of Allah azza wa jal are not attributed with evil. So when we say Al-Qadr khayrihi wa sharrihi whether good or evil you know that Al-Qadr here is referred to the creations to the created matters destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah created Satan and Allah created Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Allah is the one who created good and evil Allah preordained by his eternal will the existence of Prophet Muhammad and the existence of Iblis, Satan. The attribute of the self of Allah Azza wa which is destiny, is not attributed with evil. But the creations that Allah created, some are good, some are evil. So the term Qadr can bear two meanings. When we say Qadr, this can bear two meanings. The first meaning refers to the eternal attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is to make everything as they are. This is the definition of Al-Qadr, which is an attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I was created at this time. You were created at this time. We weren't at the time of Prophet Muhammad. This is what we call Al-Qadr of Allah. The predestination of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah predestined for me to exist at this time not before and to be born from these specific parents everything is predestined all what you see all what you can see also from the unforeseen matters what's in the sky what's above that what's in the second earth and third earth and fourth earth up to the seventh earth all predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Al-Qadr this term Al-Qadr 
can bear two meanings. So we have to believe that the th things which occur, whether good or evil, by the eternal predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the things which occur, whether good or evil, they exist by the predestination, the eternal predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the aforementioned hadith, the Qadr refers to the created things which occur by the eternal predestination of Allah Azza wa Jal, which part of it is good and part of it is evil.